Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're going to be going over a geothermal plant. How to tap into your magma core at the bottom of your asteroid and using that to make power. That's right. A geothermal plant is, by definition, using the heat in the uh, core to provide heat energy, and we convert that heat into power. And of course, in oxygen not included, we will be able to do that as well. And today we're going to show you exactly how to do that safely, what you're going to want to do, and things to look out for. But of course, let's get started. Now, of course, the first step you're going to want to take is to find a space near the magma at the bottom of the map. Usually, you're going to want to look for a big mass of magma and not too much obsidian blocks or neutronium. Now, neutronium has no heat transfer, so having a wall there just kind of slows down the heat transfer with everything else. And obsidian is very unconductive, meaning that having more magma touch itself is better. So in a case, this area is not that great because there's a lot of small pools of magma while we have large veins of obsidian. Over here, though, this is going to be a somewhat large pool of magma with the obsidian nearby only surrounding the outside, which is not too bad. So we're going to be choosing to tap this area specifically instead of somewhere like over here and on the far right, not really that big compared to this size. So we're going to be choosing to tap this side. And then what you're going to be wanting to do afterwards is get your space above it to become a vacuum. Now, the way you make the vacuum doesn't really matter. All you need to do is make a vacuum before you start doing this so that you don't run into the chance of melting, superheating objects, and doing things that you didn't want to do. Of course, this is just for safety measurements. And if you guys do want to do it without a vacuum, you can. But letting the heat leak out from the magma means you get less thermal energy, meaning that your magma is going to solidify faster and means that you're going to get less power in the long run. But you're going to want to get that vacuum. Now, the next thing we're going to do is show you guys how to actually tap the magma and get a heat sink started safely without getting your duplicates burned. Now, for the most part, you do need to get Atmo suits here as that extra heat resistance is going to be nice. And the reason why you're going to want that heat resistance is because the abyssal light that we're going to be working on is actually going to be really hot as it touches the magma. But ideally, what you're going to be wanting to look for is a corner. So these corners right here are very nice to have as it allows you to corner build meaning that if I take these two tiles away and my duplicate stand here, I could build diagonally without touching the magma. This is a safe way of doing so, and in a vacuum, that means that the heat does not leak out, and we could do this safely. So, we're going to dig it out and show you guys how we're going to tap the magma with our heatsink. All right, guys, so we mined out a little bit of the abyssal light, and typically after you have your vacuum, this is going to be what you're going to want to do. Normally, you're not really scared of the abyssal light, but you don't want to spill anything on top as the contact with solids will induce heat transfer. Meaning that if I spill even oil right here, I will be flooded with sour gas. Now, of course, that means you have to be safe and make sure everything is out of there. In our case, this is uh, how we're taking care of that. Now, you guys might be wondering, how do you do a heat sink in this setup? What we're gonna do is show you exactly how to do that. So the first step's gonna be make a window tile, and that window tile is gonna be right here. Now, of course, we're gonna be waiting for the dupes to uh, corner build the window tile, as this is always gonna be made out of diamond. Now, I would honestly recommend diamond as the properties of diamond is very strong that melting point at 3926 celsius and the fact that it's 80 thermal conductivity the stats are great the temperature threshold's great and it's also diamond something that you don't really have much use for in the game since it does not give you a bonus run speed when making window tiles and the only other things you could be really make with this are furniture items like the arrow pot or things like the Great Monument, as a part of the monument requires diamond as well. Outside of that, you don't really have much use for this resource. But it's a great resource though, when it does have its use. So, as you can see right here, Justin is corner building the diamond tile, and this is going to be the way you're going to want to do 
this setup. Just like that. So you can see the diamond tile superheating up, and that's going to be the heat sink that we're going to want to do. Now, of course, there's going to be more steps to this. And the next step we're going to want to take is to mine out these two tiles and then mine out this corner. All right, guys, this is the next step. We mined out this tile with the dig. That was the last thing you guys saw. And then we built one window tile here and one window tile here. That makes it so that we could corner build this tile. So we're going to mine this out and corner build that tile just like that. And the other thing we're going to do is mine out these three tiles as well. This is because the heat sink is going to be going up vertically, so we have to clear the space above that. Alright, now that everything's mined out, we're going to be putting the window tile again through the corner. And after we get that done, we're only going to be a couple steps away before we get to set up the actual geothermal plant that's going to be up here. Now for the most part, the pattern is going to be after we get that bottom tile, we're going to want a steel mechanized door right here, which we'll set up soon. But for the most part, what you're going to want to do is keep this door open so that there's no heat transfer for the window tile to the mechanized airlock. Now, if you guys want, you guys could actually go to the automation overlay and see that the automation port is on the left hand tile. This means that you could preemptively set up an automation wire there with a signal switch to keep the door open. So we finished building the mechanized airlock and the two window tiles above. As you can see that when we have the signal switch on green, that does not allow any heat transfer from the window tiles to the door, which means that our window tiles up top are unaffected by the temperature. So this is a good thing. All right. So uh, we got our blueprint in place, the design that we decided to use for this amount of space. As you can see right here, this was the initial design that we set you guys up with, and this is going to be the rest of the design. This was the most important part to get done first, and then everything else is going to be up to you. This design is so that none of the heat leaks out when we actually tap into the magma. What does that mean? That means that we don't have anything touching the heat source so that none of it dissipates. And that's actually the main purpose of the vacuum in the room. By having the vacuum in the room, the window tiles do not transfer heat unnecessarily, meaning that none of the heat from the magma slips outside of the vacuum. By doing so and making it so that we don't have any corners like this, this window tile made out of diamonds will be able to actually transfer heat to all of the window tiles somewhat evenly as long as it touches the heat sink in the middle, but not to the insulated tiles. The insulated tiles right here touching the window tiles will have a little bit of heat transfer and will heat up slowly. So we want to avoid having anything touch the window tile. So having a layer below it that is a vacuum also means that we don't touch the abyssalite, that solid to solid heat transfer we're trying to avoid at all costs. So this is why we have a layer of vacuum right below. And so we are choosing to use three steam turbines. In your case, it's really about how much power you need to generate and the amount of steam turbines you're gonna use to tap into your heat sink is really up to you. I'm choosing to do a three steam turbine build. You could go as many as you want, as long as you have the space to build it. And that's really up to you how much you guys wanna use. For the most part, I'm going to be utilizing three, and there's no real reason for that. It just happens to be because it's an odd number, one heat sink in the middle, and then spread out the heat to the uh, turbines on the left and right. All right, so we got most of the design built, and you can see right here, we added a couple things. There is some diamond temp shift plates here, and you're going to want to build it somewhat in a similar design. You don't need to actually have it on every tile. Alternating like this is good enough. And by having it alternate, we're technically hitting up most of the space inside the box. Now, you want to leave a layer from the walls on each side, as that's not something you want to have. The temp shift plates will start transferring heat to the walls. And typically, you're not going to want to do that, as if the walls absorb heat, you lose a little bit of power. Now, of course, that amount is negligible in most cases. But, of course, you want to avoid that if you can. The other thing we added in was the, the thermal sensors right here. As you could see, we have two thermal sensors underneath the middle spoke of the left and right steam turbine. Because our 
window tile right here, heat sink is in the middle of the build. It's going to be harder to heat up the steam on the left and right side. Now, of course, we're not actually going to need to have a OR gate for this as the green signals will always override the red, meaning if one of these is at 200, it's going to be able to send a signal to green to keep the door open. So in our case, we're able to save a little bit, 25 refined metal. It's not a lot, but it's honest work. Now, of course, that's going to be the simple automation for that and the temp shift plates. The other things we also added is automation for the steam turbines. This is eventually going to connect to the smart battery. And we also added in a power line off of a heavy watt wire. Now you could see we have a heavy watt plate right here. We're going to end up having another one here and a insulated tile up top. But before we actually build those, we're going to actually do a one drop liquid lock setup on both this tile and that tile. But of course, this is where the uh, next step of the build is. Of course, if you wanted a wider steam turbine setup, you guys are welcome to. I'm just going to be rolling with three. And from there, we're going to be going to the next steps before we actually kick it on. Okay, so now everything is more or less done. We added in the pipeline. As you can see, we added in our aqua tuner setup. One of the takeaways is that I'm putting a bridge here so that we don't have contact with the pipes in the window tile heat sink that we're going to have at the bottom of the steam room. This means that the pipes won't heat up and makes it a lot harder for the contents to get warm. Now, of course, the insulated pipes aren't perfect insulation, meaning if you do run an insulated pipe through here, that tile will have a little bit of heat transfer with the liquids inside. And that's typically a bad thing. So we wanted to avoid that, but for the most part, that's what we did for that. And we added then the uh, water outlets for the steam turbine so that the steam could drip back in. After that, we also added in a one drop liquid lock for the crude oil, which is why we actually have the insulated tiles right here. That's because when we spilled out the oil, that would spill out to the side. And so that we don't get an accidental sour gas spill, we had to put some insulated tiles to make it easier for us to mop up. We had one tile space right here to drip in water. Um, the amount right here, I'd say around 20 kilograms per tile. This is so that when we run the aqua tuner loop on top of a liquid, we could maintain a vacuum up top. A liquid layer at the bottom will cool down the steam turbine so that when the steam turbine heats up, it will be able to be cooled by the aqua tuner so that it could still run. If you guys did not know this, a steam turbine is not able to run if the body temperature of the building is above 100. It will automatically shut off. And of course, a steam turbine consumes about 10% of the heat of the steam that it converts into water. Let's get the final window tiles built. Hopefully my dupes will not trap themselves on the left side. But we do need to build these tiles so that we could finish the connection. Now, for the most part, if you guys are scared with the crude oil one drop lock, I would recommend putting a proper T lock in here if you guys are having no faith in that design. And also this part, this part's going to be filled up with steam. Really, this doesn't need to be uh, having a drop. We can actually just seal this up. But in case something fails and we have to go in to fix it, I like having the options. In most cases though, you should not have the steam push out the crude oil as that should not be possible. Crude oil is the heaviest liquid and does not get pushed around. All right, guys, everything is in place. The heat sink's connected. All we have to do is close the door to allow the heat to start doing its thing. We have our liquid locks. Everything is set in place. The outlet pipes, the aqua tuner cooling loop the liquids on the ground to cool down the turbines, water to make steam. And of course, typically I'm aiming for about 30 kilograms per tile. And of course, this is four tiles wide. So four times 30 is around 120 kilograms. We're a little bit above, doesn't really matter. And usually the more steam, the better. So we have to kickstart this ourselves. So let's see this baby run. So we see the heat transfer right here, slowly heating up. And as soon as the water gets heated up, it's going to be generating that power. So let's speed this up. Once we get one thing of steam, it's going to start spreading out. The temp shift plates touching the cool water is condensing it back down. But once this gets started, it's going to touch the thermal sensors. And that's where the automation is going to start. Now that the gases are coming in, we could bring out the gas overlay. Look at the temperature of that. And some of it's still condensing, which is okay. 
But the moment all of this turns into steam, we're just waiting for this to heat up. And there we go. Just like that. Now, once the steam gets to 200 degrees, the door is going to open and our steam turbines are going to be near max power. The steam turbines actually generate power according to the temperature of the steam and the hotter the steam, the more power you generate. So the steam you can see right here, since the door is open, the bottom of that 1500, but on the top half, the window tiles are around 200 degrees. This allows us to maintain the temperature without dragging too much heat from the bottom and only pulling enough heat as we need it. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is go over 200 degrees by a lot because you don't get any extra power by going over 200 degrees. And since you do generate 10% of the steam temperature on the turbine, you're going to be actually being very inefficient by doing that. Because of 10% uh, of the heat, the hotter you go, the more temperature you're going to put on the turbine, means your aqua tuners are going to have to work harder. And having the door open means that the moment we actually need power, these will kick on at max power. All right, guys, so here's the geothermal power in action. As we're pulling out the power, the geothermal is coming out max 850 watts. As you guys can see, it is working pretty well. As long as we need the energy, it will continuously be enabled by our smart battery automation. That's very straightforward. Now, there was one thing I didn't explain is that if you actually have this not running, meaning your steam turbines are not using the steam to create power because maybe you guys aren't consuming the power, so you're having it sit there. If your aqua tuner turns on, it's actually going to be possible for this to generate enough heat to start heating up the steam in the room to anywhere around 300 degrees and eventually break your aqua tuner. So we are going to show you guys a quick automation setup and that's going to be the same line that connects to my smart battery. So this thermal sensor right here is right on top of the aqua tuner and it's set to above 275. Anytime the steam gets above 275 degrees, it's going to forcefully kick on the steam turbines, regardless of if we need the power or not. But this has been the geothermal build, you guys. If you guys have any questions about the geothermal power plant, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.